It's a pompano. We're on the Fishing Girl Silver Rig with uh, salted shrimp. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kathy Sanders. I'm a surf fishing guide in Northeast Florida. And what I want to show you today is how to salt your own shrimp. Now, I was getting really tired of wasting a lot of money buying shrimp all the time. And then I would either throw it back in the ocean when I was done fishing for the day, or I would give it to somebody else. Uh, when I would bring it home, I didn't know this salting process. So I would just kind of freeze it, pull them back out of the freezer, freeze it again, and then you know the drill until they look so terrible and they smell so bad that nothing's gonna eat them at all. So what I'm gonna show you is how to stop throwing your money away on shrimp and salting your own shrimp. It's really a simple process once you get the hang of it. I've tried many different methods of salting shrimp. This is the method that I have landed on that works for me the best. It may not work for everyone this way, but I have kind of merge several different processes and this is what I'm finding that works best for me. The salted shrimp is very effective. The fish are biting it. I've done other types of salted shrimp where the fish were not interested in eating it at all. So why are we doing it if the fish are not biting on it? Because the whole purpose is using it for bait. Let's get into this video and show you how to do it. So first I'm gonna show you all of the things that I use when I'm going to salt my shrimp. I'm going to use this, you can use either a plate. I've just found it easier to have a flat surface. You can use a bigger or smaller one, depending on how many shrimp that you're gonna be salting. Paper towels, very important for a couple different reasons. We'll get into that. A container, I like to use plastic. I was using glass, but really not smart to have glass on the beach if you're gonna be taking out there with you in the container. So stick to, plus I have like a million of these. Like everyone probably has a million of these sitting around. So why not use them on salted shrimp? Plain salt, non-iodized, very important. Do not use iodized salt. It's not gonna work the same way. I got this off of Amazon for probably like, I think $7, it's pool salt. So it's still non-iodized salt and it's coarser than the regular salt. As you can see here, I'm gonna put a little bit in my hand. You've got some larger chunks of it. We're gonna put that on the very bottom layer of our salted shrimp container. And then of course, we've got the shrimp here. Now I like to freeze my shrimp for, uh, these have been in the freezer. I confess these, I've been trying to make this video for a long time and I've not had, recently have not had time to just take these shrimp like a day after I uh, freeze them and, and use them again. But as you can see, the brains are still intact. There's no red here in these shrimp. I just defrosted them for maybe 30 minutes um, after I, if you don't wanna like defrost them for hours, because then they will start going bad because they are dead. <laughs> so I've got three different batches here of shrimp I just figured, why the heck not? I've got even more sticking in my freezer because I, I do a lot of charters, so I get fresh live shrimp. Now here's one that I'm not gonna use. So the body's starting to turn pink. This is, um, I can still technically use this. The brain isn't like orange yet, so it's barely passable. So we've got all of this shrimp here that we are going to be salting. It's gonna make a ton of bait. It's gonna last a long time and it's gonna stay on the hook really well. So let's get into the next part of this of preparing the shrimp for salting. All right, the next step that we're gonna do is we're going to take the shells off of all of these shrimp. So what I do is I keep a container nearby for the um, parts that we're not gonna keep. And we're gonna squeeze these heads off with all of the legs. We're taking all of the shells off. Um, so this is different than using Obviously, when you have live shrimp that we're using, um, fresh dead shrimp, you're gonna, it, you don't need to peel all those shells off. You wanna keep those legs because they're white and candy. Um, but we have now the de-shelled shrimp, and this is as far as I go with it. And I put it down on paper towel because we want these to be really dry. So, and you can kind of come up with a method that gets all these shells off as quickly as possible. One thing I do is I, I pinch the tail, but I kind of squeeze it, squeeze it up from the, the hard part, squeeze it up so that some of that shell comes off and you still have all that meat. You don't want to take all the meat with the tail. So I'm keeping as much meat as possible. 
squeeze in the head, there is like a long stringy thing that can come out of the brain, the spinal column. And I try to get all of that too. But I'm gonna take a few minutes here and we're just gonna speed this up. See that long stringy thing that's coming out of the body? That is the spinal column, I believe. I'm getting all of these legs, all of these shells off so that all of you have is that that piece of shrimp there. Nice, nice piece of shrimp and it still looks nice and white. All right, so I'm gonna finish doing this. We're gonna turn the camera down and I'm gonna speed it up and let you watch all of these shrimp turning into baits. de-shelled and we have all of our shells here and I'm going to give you a little tip here because you don't want to just stick these in your trash can. Um, that would be a mistake <laughs> and uh, guys your wife will <laughs> give you grief if you do it. Put these back in the Ziploc bag that you had them in or whatever however you had them. I would suggest the Ziploc because that's kind of locked in there. I'm just going to throw all this stuff that was associated with it as much air out as possible and then I'm just going to put this in my freezer until trash day and then it's not going to smell, it's not going to be bad, it's going to go out with the trash and voila, you're not going to have that horrible smell wherever it is that you usually put your trash. Okay, the next step is we want these as dry as possible before we salt them. So I'm gonna take some more paper towels. We're just gonna lay over the top of them. And we're gonna get as much moisture out because as we salt these, these are going to actually release more moisture out of them. And I'm gonna show you, I have a, a batch of salted shrimp that just got done curing just gently peel this back because the smaller ones will stick to it. And then you can go back in and if you see some of them that look like they're still got a lot of wetness on it, you can just dab that. Or if they have like some of the brains, sometimes you can see where there's still some brains left. Okay, they look pretty dry now. So now we get to salting with the container. So more paper towels. I'm gonna use two just because these do release a ton of moisture and I'm just gonna line the bottom of this with the paper towel. And we're gonna take our pool salt and probably gonna put maybe two scoops in the bottom here, just enough to make an even layer. And this coarse salt is going to allow some of that moisture to fall in the cracks of this salt and get away from and down to the down to the paper towel to get away from the actual shrimp that's trying to cure. <laughs> For our next step we're going to start layering the shrimp in the container with the non-iodized salt. And so I'll point this down so you can see a little bit better. I'm just gonna start putting it in here. It's gonna wanna stick to your fingers because it's dry now, kind of gummy. And you don't want these like right on top of each other. You don't want, you want a little bit of space in between them. If not, they're not gonna cure. So I'll do a layer and then I'll show you what that looks like. And for this many shrimp, I'm probably gonna need two containers in order to salt all of these effectively. And while I was while I was getting these lined up, you probably noticed I was kind of putting them in relation to size. So here's 
I call that one layer. Um, I'm gonna just cover those with salt. This might seem like a lot of salt because it is. <laughs> but you want these to be covered well enough that they're not gonna to be touching the next layer of shrimp. So if, the, if you can find a place like Costco or somewhere that has non-iodized salt or even order a large container off of Amazon, probably gonna help you financially if you're salting shrimp a lot. And we can take some of those smaller ones and kind of put them in between the larger pieces to kind of fill in some of that space. And you're just gonna keep layering it until you run out of shrimp or until your container is full. I don't usually do this, but I ran out of the plain salt. So to finish this off, I'm just gonna Cover it with a layer of pool salt. Now, I've tried to use just pool salt when salting shrimp, and that did not work at all. It didn't, they didn't cure. So as soon as I get more of this plain salt, I'll, I'll go in and you can actually take the salt out and then re, like put fresh salt in. I don't usually have to do that unless they get too wet and they saturate too much. So here's the batch that I made. I did this on uh, the 6th of August and today is the 13th. So you can see they've gotten a little whiter. They're firmer. You can break them and they're tough. So this one, the one this size, I would actually break into three pieces and you can either break them up or cut them up. But little tiny one, that's one bait by itself. But you can see that this salt in here has gotten pretty damp. It's pretty wet. You can see that pool salt kind of mixes with the other salt, but that's the regular iodized, this, this plain salt, and it's gotten really wet, very damp, very moist. And that's all from the shrimp that have um, all the fluids come out of it in, this, in the process of it getting salted. But I have lots and lots of bait in here. I can catch a lot of fish, and the fish are attracted to this bait. So, this is how you can stop wasting your money on shrimp every single time you go out there. You know, it's very, very helpful if the bait shop is closed and you want to get there maybe before sunup and your bait shop, your tackle shop is not going to open until maybe 7 or 6.30 and you're trying to get out there before the sunrise, bring some salted shrimp with you. Um, I've found it to be just almost always as effective as live shrimp or fresh dead shrimp. Uh, I've not noticed... Sometimes they're biting on this better than the live or fresh dead. So this is another alternative to have bait with you at all times that the fish are going to bite on and you can stop wasting money buying shrimp and throwing them away into the ocean or giving them away when you're done fishing. You just throw them in the freezer and when you have a chance, go ahead and salt them up and now you've got bait that you can bring with you. So I hope this has been really helpful. And let me know in the comments if this is something that you do, if you have a certain method, if this is like similar to the method that you use, and if you find a difference between salting shrimp and using fresh dead or live shrimp, uh, let me know what your experience is. One last thing, I usually keep this in the fridge, and this is just my preference. You technically, as they start to, yeah, I would, I would keep them in a cool place. Don't put them in the garage for sure while they're curing. I tend to just throw them in the fridge. And uh, as you can see, I have a teen, I have a, my son is here from college. When my daughter's home, this looks like rice to her. So I have to label it, do not eat salted shrimp. And uh, same with Diet Pepsi shrimp. When I, when I put the uh, shrimp in Diet Pepsi in the colder months, I label those jars as well. Do not drink. That would be a mouthful. So anyways, hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, tight lines, God bless, and we'll see you.